Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about the very controversial and hot topic, the 2020 versus the 2021. Supra. So the A90 Supra dates go from 2020 to 2021. Some people will say that the A91 is the 2021. That is actually not the case. The A91 is just the special edition. They made a select number of Supras that only came in like a certain color and had like this cool stitching and Alcantara and stuff like that. There's probably like more options than that. But the 2021 Supra is where things changed. And one of the most common questions that I get about the Supra, especially from people who are looking to buy a, a 2020 or 2021 Supra, they wanna know which one to get. Do you get the 2020? Do you get the 2021? What are the differences? Are there any issues with the 2021 Supra? Even with a stock turbo, the spool on this thing is crazy. What's up, dude? Even with the stock turbo, the spool on this thing with like the downpipe is just insane. It sounds like a jet. It's nuts. It's, it's so loud. I'm telling you, the daily driver move was like the move. This car is just chilling in the garage, pristine all the time, ready for car shows and events. I don't have to wash it as frequently. Saved a ton of miles on it so far. Like, yeah, dude, daily driver move was massive for me. Made a huge difference in the way that I'm driving this car and just what I'm doing to it. It also gave me like the balls to kind of go a little bit harder, like further into the car as far as building. And we'll get to all that later. So if you guys are new to the channel, um, this is my 2020 Supra that I bought back in October. And just to be upfront with you guys, like. I love this car. This car is absolutely amazing. It has exceeded all of my expectations. I honestly didn't even think that I'd own it this long or that I even was considering the modifications that I'm now gonna be doing to this car. But here we are. It has, uh, it has really grown on me. The platform is just amazing. Like the B58 platform in this car particularly is just, it's just perfect. Now I know looks are completely subjective. I totally get it, but in my opinion, uh, this car looks absolutely amazing. In terms of design and style and what, what I like, this car has really, really grown on me and I'm, I love it a lot. And it's really clear when you're driving the car that people on the road love it too. They're just blown away by this thing. Continually people are stopping me and asking me about this car. They wanna know more about it. They wanna know which one to buy. They wanna know if they should get it. And so I was actually gonna make this video quite a while ago because I was kind of just gathering all my information, all of my sources, and I wanted to be able to make this video with as much information as possible. But at the end of the day, you know, there's some things that are blown out of proportion, just like any car that you buy. You know, people are going to take things way out of proportion and say that, oh my God, this is bad, this is bad, it's catastrophic, when a lot of times it's really not that bad. It can be an issue that people have just drawn a lot of attention to and maybe it only happened to a few people. I just wanna say that because that happens a lot with cars, especially in the forums. Like one person will have an issue and then everyone's like, oh my God, this car needs to be bought back by Toyota, it's a pile of shit. <laughs> and in reality, that's, that's not the case. There just happens to be some bad batches or or a bad car here and there, which is just part of mechanics and part of engineering, it happens. Welcome to the internet where everyone blows everything way out of proportion. So tell me you're trying to win a free car without actually telling me that you're trying to win a free car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so the 2020 Supra that I have, um, first off the bat, I've had zero issues with it. This car has been phenomenal from a reliability standpoint, power standpoint, modification standpoint, um, just drivability, like pretty much everything with this car has been phenomenal. I haven't ran into any issues. I haven't had any weird things happen where I need to take the car into the dealership. Literally nothing has happened to this car. And just to give you guys a little bit of context, this car is I would say pretty heavily modified. It's not like crazy, crazy, but we have like flash tuned this car over a hundred times. I've had multiple tuners tune it. It's been on the dyno, 50 plus dyno pulls. I drive the car pretty regularly, pretty hard. I would say that it is moderately modified. It's not like too crazy or anything. The internals on the engine are completely stock. The turbo is not yet upgraded. Pure turbos, where we at bro? <laughs> Come on, send me that turbo. So we're gonna talk about some of the common issues today that I read online and kind of the information that I've gathered from people. And I also want you guys to check out some of the links down in the description. I'm gonna try and source 
uh, link everything down there. So anything that I've gotten this information from, I tried to gather all that stuff and just put it in one place so you guys can click on it and check it out for yourself. So let's start with the, the obvious, the, the most obvious one that everybody is talking about, which is which one is tunable and which one is not tunable. The 2020 is tunable. This one obviously is tuned. And so from what I gather and from what I understand, if your ECU predates June of 2020, you can tune your car. It is tunable, it is unlockable, and you can go ahead and tune it. If it post dates June of 2020, some people say July 2020, there there's, might be a little bit of room in there, but the majority of people are saying it's June. If it post dates June of 2020, uh, your car cannot be tuned. It cannot be bench unlocked and you just have to wait until someone comes out with a, a crack, some way to actually get into those ECUs and, and tune them. Which from what I gather and what I'm understanding is very, very difficult. I mean, just imagine the amount of money that would have been made so far if someone had cracked into the 2021 ECU and could actually tune those cars. There are literally hundreds of 2021 owners that are furious right now because they bought a tuner car and can't tune it. So if it were easy to crack, trust me, it would have already been done because someone would have capitalized on that and wanted to make that money, wanted to get that business. But here we are in May of 2021 and no crack, no way to get into those ECUs yet, no way to tune them. And so what are most 2021s doing? Well, they're either leaving them stock or they're using something like JB4 and just your basic bolt-ons, which I'm gonna be honest, you guys, like these cars, they're they're fast, man, they're quick. Even right out of the gate, these cars are, they make really good power. So not every car on the street has to have 500 plus wheel horsepower. Like that's just an insane amount of power to just have in a street car. Don't get all caught up in like the, oh, your car needs to be 800,000 horsepower plus to even be a contender nowadays. I feel like a lot of that criticism comes from like kids who really don't understand horsepower or like how much 500 wheel horsepower actually is in a car and what that feels like. Either way, the point here is that if you bought this car and you are intending on modifying it like me and like tuning it and really taking it to that next level, you're kind of SOL if your ECU date post dates June of 2020. So just talking about it right now, that doesn't really seem like that big of a deal. For some people, they're like, ah, it's okay. I didn't even want to tune it anyways. Like, I'll just put a JB4 on it. But being able to actually ECU flash the car, it gives you so much more than just horsepower. It gives you a cleaner power graph. It gives you better driving in general. The stock tune that this car came with never quite felt great. Until I actually got with tuners who knew what they were doing, then this car really started to come to life. And I don't say that because it just had more power. The car just drove better. Throttle response was better. The power delivery was cleaner. It just felt overall like a better car when you were driving it. There are so many things that they can do when they are custom tuning cars with these platforms. Now they are so advanced that they can really go in and change everything. So in my opinion, an ECU flash is something that I, I have to have on my cars just because that's what I like to do. Like that's how I like to modify my cars. That's why I buy my cars. If you are someone who just wants to buy one of these cars and like keep it stock and you know for sure, like you're not going to touch it, then get the 2021. I mean, it's really not going to be that big of a deal to you. But if you are someone that knows that you're going to want to tinker with the car at some point, usually it starts simple and then it kind of snowballs and it's really hard to stop. It's really hard to just like put in an intake and exhaust on a car and just be like, oh, I'm cool, I'm cool. We all know that at some point, you're gonna dive right back in and you're gonna want that tune. You're gonna want that Pure 800. You're gonna want that downpipe. You're gonna want a little more, a little more, and a little more. That's called the mod bug. Now we have all been victims of the mod bug before. If you've been in this game for quite a while, you or someone you know has been affected by the modification bug. The point is, I personally feel like having a tunable ECU is a deal breaker for me. Now, do we know when the 2021 ECUs are gonna be crackable, unlockable, tunable? Not really. That goes back to what I was saying, you know, if it were easy, it probably already would have been done. And that sort of has me a little bit worried. I mean, eventually they will find a way to get into these ECUs. But the fact that it already hasn't happened has me a little bit concerned. There are a lot of people that really want to tune their 2021s. So if tuning the car is important to you, a 2020 is probably the way to go for yourself. And at the same time, why not save yourself a couple thousand dollars? Find yourself a used 2020. Now, when I bought this car, it actually had 7,000 miles on it and I paid 50,000 for it. This was back in October of 2020. Is that a good deal? 
eh, is it a bad deal? Nah, I don't know. I think it's an okay deal. I think it's fine. These cars are kind of all over the place. They're still going for quite a bit of money, but I know that if you go for a used 2020, you will save yourself a little bit of cash. So it's like, why not? If you, if you want the sure bet to be able to tune it and you know that you're gonna modify it, why not save yourself a little bit of cash and just get the one with a little bit of miles on it? For me personally, like 7,000 miles versus zero miles, not that big of a difference. If you are confused about where to find the DME or the ECU date, let me show you. Give her the old BMW pull. So you lift old girl up, drool for a little bit, and then locate your ECU, which is gonna be right under this ECU cover. This is made by NV Specialties, carbon fiber ECU cover. And it is, it is beautiful, I must say. So my friends, this is your DME. This is your ECU right here. Now these clips can actually pull these clips back to unlock them and these plugs come out. And then you can actually lift out the entire DME. And on the DME, there will be a date. I'll show you an example right here. See that part that's circled? That is the date. That's what you wanna look at. Now, personally, if I was about to buy one of these cars from a dealer and I wanted to know for sure that it was tunable, I would make them pull the DME and send me a photo of that date. I would not buy the car until they did that. I know that might seem like a little bit silly, but imagine thinking that your car was tunable and you spend $50,000 on it to find out that it's not. So really like one of the main reasons that you bought that car is to modify it and tune it. And then you find out that you took a chance, you thought maybe it was, and it's not tunable. So in my opinion, have the dealer send you a picture of that DME, make sure you see the date for yourself and uh, make sure that it is in fact tunable. There's gonna be a link down in the description to the forum post that has a little more information and updates on when these things are gonna be unlockable for the 2021s. If you guys wanna check that out, uh, educate yourselves a little bit more on it, it might help you. But let's keep this video rolling into more reasons why I prefer the 2020 over the 2021. All right, next topic. The 2021 oil consumption issues. I know I said it, I'm sorry guys. So I personally feel like this issue is being blown out of proportion a little bit. But with that being said, I don't think that buying the 2021 over the 2020 is worth the gamble of potentially having oil consumption issues, especially if you are considering modifying the car. Because let's say you buy the 2021 that is known to have these oil consumption issues. Let's say you don't have any oil consumption issues yet. Let's say you go ahead and modify your car because that's what you do to tuner cars. We modify them, that's what we like to do. But then let's say you start to have oil consumption issues. And then let's say you go to the dealer and you show them that your car is having these oil consumption issues and you're continually having to put more oil in it every thousand, 2,000, 3,000 miles. And then let's say that they deny your warranty of fixing or replacing the engine because your car is modified. Now hold on, I know that some of you are freaking out right now. But John, they have to prove that these parts have voided the warranty. They have to prove that these parts that you put on the car are actually causing the car to consume more oil than regular. You're not wrong, but dealerships will do everything. They will fight tooth and nail to not have to claim your parts via warranty. I have seen crazier things happen with even simple downpipes or even like an intake or a JB4 flash tune and they wanna tell you, well, shit out of luck guys, sorry, you modified your car, we're not gonna honor your warranty anymore. The fact that there are some people having, and it's not a lot of people, I'm not gonna say everybody in the 2021s is having these issues because it's not the case, but it is a thing that is happening. We can't say it's just not happening and that it's completely blown out of proportion. Some people are having these issues. I wouldn't wanna take that gamble. Personally, I would just rather go with the 2020 that I know for a fact is not gonna have these oil consumption issues. No chances at all. That's the gamble I would rather take, especially if I knew that I was gonna modify the car. So in my opinion, 2020 wins again. Now another thing that we should probably mention with this oil consumption issue is that sometimes BMWs and performance cars just drink oil. That's what they do. If you are coming from the JDM space <laughs> and you are now entering the German space, this can be a little bit of a shock to you. If you've owned many BMWs before, you kind of get to know that these cars like to drink a little bit of oil. And that's sort of the price that we pay sometimes to have 
these high performing vehicles. So I feel like some of the people that are complaining just they aren't really used to owning this kind of car. They're stepping into this car expecting it to perform perfectly flawlessly all the time regardless of what they do to it. In my opinion that's not very realistic. If you are modifying a car and it's got a lot of horsepower a little bit of ingenuity is going to come into play. I usually tell someone if they're the type of person that doesn't like to deal with any issues whatsoever and just want to drive the car then don't modify it. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. Because there's always going to be a little bit of compromise when you are modifying a car. Now I know that some of these 2021s, they're bone stock. And this is just happening when they're bone stock. We don't know if it was just like a bad batch of these 2021s. We don't know if it has something to do with the break-ins. Some people are saying that by following the actual break-in procedure, it's actually making it worse for the car because the piston rings aren't seating properly. Some people are saying you should drive it harder and that actually seats the rings better. Who knows? We don't really know for sure what the problem is yet. Here's what we do know. The heads have changed on the 2020 to the 2021s. They went from that two port exhaust manifold design to the six port exhaust manifold design. The 2020s make about 30 or 40 horsepower less stock than the 2021s. And so all in all, the 2021 Supra gets a new exhaust port design. It gets different pistons, which allow for a lower compression ratio compared to the 2020, which ends up giving the 2021s stock a little bit more horsepower. Does that have something to do with it? I don't know. There are also rumors that a rumor i can't verify it but there are also rumors of people saying that the 2020 engine was carefully combed through by toyota to make sure that it met toyota's reliability standards a lot of people are saying that i can't verify it but some people say that when they upgraded in the 2021s to the new port design and the new compression and the new pistons toyota actually did not go through that engine and that's why we're seeing some issues who knows i can't verify that i don't have any sources for that it's just kind of like rumors that are going around so i don't want to sit here and say it's a fact but people are saying that but here's the thing at the end of the day like i said if you're going to be taking that gamble if you are going to be buying this car because you want to be able to tune it you want to be able to modify it you want to be able to put more power down you want a custom tune on the car so it drives better then buying the 2020 is is definitely the way to go like why not get the car that you can actually modify actually tune and it costs less if your intentions are to modify the car anyways then buying the 2021 isn't really going to serve you any benefit all said and done if the 2020 and the 2021 are fully modified upgraded turbos everything you can do tuned they're both going to be making similar power it's not like the 2021 is going to be way stronger, way better than the 2020. So even if you're considering going all in on the car and you think that the 2021 is really gonna be that much better, it's not. I've also heard that if that six port exhaust manifold in the head is that important to you, you can literally take the 2021 head and put it on the 2020 block just slap it right on like everything just transfers right over it's very easy i don't know how much that would be or if it would even be worth it but you could do that if you wanted to so like i said guys i'm gonna leave some of these sources um some of the stuff that i've been reading down below a couple of links for you guys to check out it shall let you make your own decision up but i just this is a common question that i get so i knew that i should probably make a video just giving you guys my opinion if you're gonna buy one get the 2020 save yourself some money you know it's tunable just make sure it predates the ecu predates June of 2020. But just buy the one that's cheaper, that you know is tunable, that you know you can modify and have fun with. I will say that, you know, once you actually get into modifying these cars, that's when they really come to life. If you are just someone that wants to enjoy a stock car and, and take advantage of that warranty, then obviously this isn't really a video that's going to pertain to you much, unless however you value your time. And I think that's also a very important point to bring up. You know, like some people are like, oh, if the worst thing happens, I got to bring it back because of warranty, whatever, it goes in and out of the dealership. That's a lot of time, man. Like imagine spending 50 thousand or even more on a new car and you have to sit there and go back and forth with the dealership playing these games telling them to figure it out then you don't have a car that you just spent all this money on so the few people who have had the catastrophic oil consumption issues um, in the forums there are a couple of people that actually had their cars bought back and then there is someone who actually went the lemon law route and they were able to get all of their money back from toyota um, because they did have the 2021 supra it did have the oil consumption issues and the entire engine did have to be replaced one of the guys that just put a bad taste in his mouth he sold it back to toyota got his full refund and just didn't buy another one that was it for him which is unfortunate because the 2020s are 
amazing. They've had zero issues. So if you really loved the car in terms of like the styling and everything else that went along with it, you should have just got the 2020 because then you wouldn't be in that position. In one of those links below, there is a poll that they actually have going on with the 2020 and 2021 Supras with oil consumption issues. In that poll, you're going to see that the amount of people that have reported that they do not have oil consumption issues in a 2021 is about half of the people that have reported that they do. Now, remember what I said earlier, you know, some people blow this out of proportion. So not everyone is gonna understand that some of these cars just take a little more oil. So like, even if they have just a little bit of a problem, they're gonna be like, oh my God, oil consumption. When it's like us BMW guys who have owned a lot of BMWs and performance cars, we kind of know like, eh, it takes a little more oil. So what, like maybe thicken it up a little bit, put in a little more oil and just drive and enjoy the car. But at the same time, I understand, you know, you bought a brand new car, you spent a lot of money on it. You don't want it to be having any sort of issues whatsoever. So I get it, I totally get it. I'm not creating excuses for Toyota and BMW. I'm just saying that yeah, it's a performance car. Not everything's gonna be perfect all the time. And if you want perfect all the time, I mean, these cars, they're just not for you probably. <laughs> I would say they're probably just like, go with something that's, you know, very cheap and easy and reliable and, and not really quirky and not very performance oriented at all. Because most performance cars are gonna come with their special set of <laughs> issues and problems. Now also, I just wanna say, you know, the, the, the forums are a great place to grab information and kind of see what's going on with people and their cars. However, just be wary because the forums can be a um, incredibly toxic place. Make sure you just don't get wrapped up in like the drama and the old heads in the forums who just kind of want to make people feel bad for asking certain questions. You see a lot of that going on in forums nowadays and it's really weird. I came across a few things in like both the older super forums and the newest super forums that were just like incredibly toxic. And they sit there and they go back with each other and just argue over some of the dumbest shit. So make sure that if you're going to the forums, like just get in there, get your information and, and get out. It's not worth it to get caught up in these ridiculous debates with people who try to prove which car is better, the MK4 or the MK5, just buy the car you want continue on with your life. There's no sense in getting caught up in debates and forums. So I think that that pretty much concludes this video, you guys. Um, 2020s, you can get them from uh, high 40s to low 50s. I would say the 2021s are 50s to maybe a little bit more. I've kind of seen them all over the place. But if you are in the market for a Supra, I mean, these cars are amazing. I would just say go with the 2020. Save yourself a little bit of cash. Get one that you can modify down the road. We don't know how long it's going to take for those 2021s to become tunable. So I really don't think it's even worth the gamble of waiting around and seeing when they uh, they actually do crack those ECUs. I do think they will. I think they will make them tunable at some point. Someone will figure it out because whoever that is, they're gonna make a ton of money. Whoever cracks into that first is going to be, they're gonna be raking it in. But my bet is on the 2020 for which one you should buy. As far as like A91, like should you get the A91 versus the A90? In my opinion, no, I don't really think it's worth it. I'm pretty sure the refraction blue came in the A91 series. So like if you if you really want the blue and like that's the reason that you want it, maybe, but for me personally, I'll take the A90, I'll take the 2020 all day. Anyways, guys, I hope this video helped you out. I hope it answered some questions. Make sure you check out the links down below and come to your own conclusion if you want. If you wanna add anything, if you have a 2020 or had a 2021 and you came across some issues or you wanna add something to the tuning discussion, feel free to drop it down below. This might be a great place for people to look and get more information if they're trying to decide should they get a 20 or a 2021. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.